quarter to seven in the morning. Just come to work to see if my tent's arrived. I think it has, but uh, there's not many lights on in there. The alarm's probably still on. First time inside the new tent. Well, here we are. Didn't expect it to rain. Rain's come from behind the building, I guess. I guess we'll see if it's waterproof. And, I mean, no doubt that it will be. So probably in early 2022, maybe end of 2021, I saw this Paul Messner video. He had the Nature Hike Cloud Peak 2 and it was on a hill overlooking a lake in, in the UK somewhere. It captured my imagination, I guess. I bought that tent. Watching back the other day, he alluded to the tent being a replica of a more expensive tent. And I didn't realize at the time, but uh, this is the tent that it was a replica of. So I guess in a way, I feel like I'm paying my dues buying this tent because this is, this is the original. Magpie. Sold my motorcycle recently. In a previous video I took it up to Bundaberg to my parents place. The plan was to ride it and then fly up uh, every now and again so I could go riding with dad and my brother Cam. But the airline that was going to Bundaberg turns out that it doesn't fly from Sydney and it's just gone bust so that's not going to happen. So I sold the bike and bought this tent hoping to have many an adventure in it. Because this tent was so expensive, I really wanted to make sure I got the right size and fit. There's the, the Sulo for one person, the LAC2 and the LAC3. So on the floor, I mapped out with some sticky tape the different tent sizes with, with my sleeping pads in different configurations, like three pads in the LAC3 versus two pads in the ALAC 3 and then the ALAC 2 just to get a sense of size and I felt that the ALAC 2 after getting a visual of this was the best fit for me moving forward. So you can get this tent in you know brown and also in green. Those colours may seem uh, more practical for the places where I go but I don't know. Um, I just had to get the red one. When you buy a Ferrari you want it to be Ferrari red. And I think the same is with the, with the Hilleberg. I can get the other colours, but this this colour just seems to be the Hilleberg colour. Um, and I and I'm guessing it's for spotting the tent easily in you know in a snowstorm. But but yeah, I just wanted to get in the red. Um, so yeah. So where was I? I was going to set up the Cloud Peak too, side by side with this tent, but given that it's raining and wet. I'm not going to worry about it, I'll just do some b-roll or something. One of the things that, that really annoyed me with the Cloud Pick 2 was the zips. They just kept getting stuck. So you can see on this tent how you've got this, this flap here. On the Cloud Peak 2 it had like a material one and it would just bog into it. And so because you couldn't get your hands on the outside when you're on the inside, it would just get stuck and so uh, one time I got both the zips on both sides stuck and so I had to climb out under the tent to get out which was a bit frustrating I'm pretty stoked to have this tent this is this is the dream tent I bought a Durston X mid 2p well it's a good tent I just like the freestanding tents just to be able to set it up where you are and then move it into position once it's once it's set up just to get the ideal spot. A lot of people say it's quite easy to set up, but I find it really fiddly. If you don't get the angles right and you don't get the tension right at the bottom, when you put the verticals in, it just doesn't work that well. One thing I do like about the Durston is the zipper on it on the inside. It has this like, it's like a J zip, which I really like because Australia's a bit snaky and I get a bit paranoid with this T-zip where you've got the, the junction. This tent's got a bit of a triangle there, but just to having the possibility of things climbing in through there, just, I get a bit paranoid about that, I guess. I, I like having a, a zip that finishes up the top. With Hilleberg, 
had an insert that had that like J zip like the Durston, I'd be stoked with that. That would be the ultimate. So I noticed um, it is coming in a little bit. what I can gather, Broadberg is a Swedish company. This tent's made with materials from South Korea and assembled and sewn together in Estonia. See what you're doing. <laughs> so we get upstairs and the sun's out. Awesome. Yeah, so if you're in a unit or you just don't have an outdoor spot where you can dry your tent out easily or you're living in a climate where you know it rains most of the time or a lot of the time this tent is perfect because you can just set it up in this kind of space with no grass no pegs it's just gold this is one of the main reasons why i prefer this kind of tent over the trekking pole tents just for the ease of being able to set it out, up and dry it out. I mean, with a trekking pole tent, I guess you could just drape it over things to dry it out. Um, I mean, my Durston is still not packed up properly because in that large blow, when it's up at Colburn, the ground sheet has gone, gotten inverted somehow and it's all twisted up. So I need to go down to the grass, reset it up. So I'm just waiting for some good weather and the ground to dry out so I can do that. With this tent, don't have to wait.